Hello, my name is Brandon Enright, and today I'm going to make a solving video. I have never done a physical solving video before, so I hope this goes smoothly. Um, and I'm going to cover Eric Virgo's unbandaged helicopter cube. So I've already shown this off, the, the polishing aspect of it. Um, now I'm going to show off how to solve it. So if you've ever seen, well, let's start with a regular helicopter cube. So if you've ever seen a, an original helicopter cube, you know that it jumbles. So that is, is you can turn uh, you can turn this face. You, you normally do it 180 degrees, but you can turn it by 70 some odd degrees. And then another axis, an adjacent axis, is available. And so you can do things like that, and the puzzle sort of changes shape. So let me undo that. Okay, now let me show the same thing on a Kirby Copter. Same angle, same principle. Change of shape, let me undo. Show it on the Copter 3x3x3. Three by three by three. Same angle. Same principle, changes shape. This puzzle has um, an extra move available to it. It has that face move, but that doesn't really change the jumbling. I thought it would, but it turns out not to. I mean, it makes the jumbling no much, no harder, and it's possibly even arguably easier. Okay, um, here's a Curvy Copter 2. It's slightly deeper cut. And again, it's the same angle. Puzzle's pretty catchy. Don't think it's broken in. And again, it changes shape. So, what you can't do with any of these puzzles is when you do this and you turn this up, turn that over, you cannot turn this. That is blocking. You can't turn it. Let me show you on the helicopter cube. Ah, this thing's really catchy. On um, where is it? There you go. There's a regular helicopter cube. You cannot turn this. But on the unbandaged helicopter cube, not only can you do sort of the normal jumbling like that. You can also do, you can turn this. Eric sliced the part into two pieces. And so now it has additional jumbling moves available to it. This makes the puzzle get ridiculously jumbled. Now, if this puzzle were just a sphere, so if it were a sphere and I were turning sort of the edges of a sphere, then the corners and these center triangles would look the same. You wouldn't really be able to tell the difference between the two. And so when I did something like that, it wouldn't, you wouldn't have this blockage here. So see this piece is hanging over and I can't turn that. If this were a sphere, you would not have that blocking. The same thing goes with this. This is hanging over, and I can't turn that. This is what's called overhang bandaging, and it's the result of this puzzle not being a sphere. So not only does this have the difficulty of jumbling, just because jumbling makes a mess, but it also has the difficulty of overhang bandaging. So let me undo that. So, also, obviously corners and triangles, center triangles, can now exchange places. Um, this is, on the sphere, fundamentally, they're the same exact shaped part, so it's not hard to see on a sphere. It's a little bit harder to see on this puzzle how it occurs, but trust me, it's, it's, not, it's not amazing magic, but it is pretty cool. So... I want to talk a little bit about how to solve this puzzle. 
I'm not going to show a solve. I'm not going to show a full scramble or solve in this video. I'm going to save that for the second video. In this video, I just want to talk a little bit about um, how to handle some of the various different cases. So, just using the most obvious jumbling that's available to you. What did this do? It did a, a swap here. So the red and yellow tiles swapped and the blue and the, that corner swapped. So it did a 2-2 swap. So this is an even permutation because it's two swaps and even number of swaps. Notice that the orientation of the red triangle did not change orientation, but the yellow triangle did change orientation. So <clears throat> if we do the inverse, it just so happens that the inverse is also the mirror about this edge. So it's a mirror about the plane that cuts this edge and this edge. So if we do... I have this puzzle a little bit too loose. And when it's too loose, it means that the tiles can catch a little bit. So I did that, and then let me do, undo, let me do the inverse. And then let me do the inverse again. Oh, excuse me, I didn't do the inverse. Hold on. Here is the inverse. So now, again, it did the same 2-2 two -two swap, but it, the orientation of this piece changed. You know, it basically mirrored, mirrored the effect. So this piece, instead of, instead of this base being against this side, it's against this side. And the red triangle changed orientation instead of the yellow triangle. But every, everything else is the same. So we can actually use this by just applying it several times. So let's, let's see how that works. Apply it once. So now we've done a 2-2 swap. If we apply it again, those pieces are going to swap back, but we know that their orientation is going to change. So we know that if we change the yellow orientation of the yellow triangle the first time, now we're going to change the orientation of the red triangle because the yellow one doesn't change. And we don't really know what's going to happen to these. It's hard to tell what's going to happen to those. But let's do it again. Okay, so now the orientation of the yellow triangle and the red triangle has changed, and it just so happens that the blue triangle has also changed. So look, they're all sort of, they're all twisted the same direction. So let's apply it another two times. Now they're all twisted the other direction, so we just can keep, kept on twisting them, and so if we apply it another two times, they should go to untwisted. And then, so this is the last time I'm going to have to apply it, and now take a look. The, we know the orientation of the red triangle is going to change. The orientation of the yellow triangle is not, so the yellow triangle is going to get solved. The red triangle, if, if we're pushing the, the, against the base of this triangle, then it's going to go into place correctly. And the base of this blue triangle is going to go into place correctly. So basically, the piece that we start with, if we want them all to go incorrectly, we have to be, the base and the base have to be aligned with what we're... Let's cut on the tile there. Okay, so now it's solved. We didn't really scramble it. We can use that to change the orientation of these pieces and to swap corners and center pieces. Now, it would be nice if we could swap corner and center pieces without changing these orientations too much. So let's see if we can add a few more moves and adapt it. So. So now if we did this, that obviously changes the orientation. Okay, so let's start over. Okay, now we need to, we want to swap this piece with a corner in a way that won't change the orientation. So let's bring it over here. Put a corner in that place. Okay, now the corner's in that place. And then we keep on going. So now we've swapped a corner We've swapped a, a, a triangle or a center triangle and a corner. So let's see if we can actually uh, undo that. So that's pretty convenient in that we can swap a, a triangle and the corner, and we don't really change the orientation of any other pieces. So Using those two principles, oh, you know, there's one other principle. So what happens when, um, let me actually do the inverse. What happens when we're in a situation where we have a corner 
and a center triangle swapped and this triangle is in a different orientation you know it's 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 in this orientation or something like that or maybe this triangle is correct but this triangle is wrong so how do we handle that case where where it wouldn't go back to solved so let's take a look at that So how do we change the, if say we wanted to change the orientation of this triangle without affecting any of the triangles, that's actually not too difficult to do. So we can bring it over, like, nope, that won't work. Um, so, okay, so this is what we can do. We can bring it around like that. Now we can use this to take it out of place temporarily. Now we can change its orientation by moving it around the puzzle. And then we would bring it back and it would be in a different orientation. And then when we did this, we would have just a single piece twisted in place. So that, I guess that's the start of the ideas for looking at this puzzle. And then in my next video, I am going to scramble it and then I'll do a solve. Hopefully that goes smoothly. I haven't done one in, in a couple weeks and so I'm probably pretty rusty. But stay tuned for the next video and I'll actually show a, a real world example, an actual solve of this puzzle.